Welcome to the Global Health Institute, part of the School of Life Sciences at EPFL, the Swiss Technical University in Lausanne, Switzerland. At the Global Health Institute, we work on diseases of truly global importance, such as tuberculosis, HIV, AIDS, and malaria. Tuberculosis kills millions of people every year, particularly in the developing world. It results from infection with an airborne bacillus, Mycobacterium tuberculosis, and as few as one or two bacilli are sufficient to cause the disease. Here we see the bacillus reaching the alveolus of the lung, and we're now going to zoom down to the bottom of the alveolus, where we will see the tubercle bacilli busily replicating. Tubercle bacilli have a complicated cell envelope which protects them from the environment and from the action of antibiotics. This cell envelope is comprised of complex polymers of lipids and sugars. The synthesis of the cell envelope takes place primarily at the poles of the cell. At the Global Health Institute, we've discovered a drug which inhibits the synthesis of one of these polymers. You can see this by the block in the production of the chains of sugar. As a result of this, the pole of the cell of the bacillus becomes fragile, and this results in the bacteria lysing, which is denoted here by the ghost-like appearance of the bacilli which are dead. Every year, malaria kills between one and three million people, mostly young children in Africa. The plasmodium unicellular parasites that cause the disease are transmitted to the human host through the bite of an infected mosquito. A first phase of parasite multiplication in liver cells generates several thousand merozoites. These highly specialized cells are geared to invade a red blood cell which will provide the parasite with a hiding place from the immune system, as well as a source of nutrients for its own growth and proliferation. Parasite multiplication follows a peculiar mode, called chisogony, in which numerous nuclei are produced in the cell prior to individualization of the daughter merozoites, which are then released into the bloodstream and initiate a new round of red blood cell infection. At the GHI, we try to understand the molecular mechanisms that control parasite proliferation. During nuclear division, Segregation of the two copies of the genome between the two daughter nuclei recurs microtubal spindles that are generated from distinct plaques located at the membrane of the nucleus. The proper working of this machinery depends on enzymes called protein kinases located at these plaques. We showed that some of these enzymes are absolutely required for parasite multiplication and survival. In collaboration with drug discovery platforms at EPFL and elsewhere, we are now searching for small molecules capable of inhibiting these enzymes by obstructing their active site. Such molecules would prevent nuclear division and may therefore represent lead toward the development of novel antimalarials. Soil transmitted helminths cause chronic infections in over 2 billion people living in developing countries. Chronic helminth infection is particularly problematic for children and can lead to poor growth, mental impairment and increased susceptibility to other infectious agents such as HIV, malaria and tuberculosis. Hookworm, which is illustrated here, also causes anemia by feasting on host red blood cells. Vaccine design has unfortunately been limited by our poor understanding of host immunity. However, we have recently shown that antibodies can kill intestinal helminths. We now hope to define exactly how antibodies function. Do they attack the parasite directly? Or do they first need to bind to and activate white blood cells such as eosinophils? Such information is imperative to the end goal of designing novel and effective vaccines against these parasites. As part of the Swiss Vaccine Research Institute, the Global Health Institute is also undertaking research in the areas of immunology and vaccine development. Topics of interest include HIV, cholera and anthrax. One of the advantages of being at EPFL, a technology-rich environment, is access to the latest cutting-edge technologies. These include nanotechnologies, information technologies and microengineering. We are trying to use the most advanced technologies to favour all members of our society, including those who are the most neglected. 
We are confident that by combining advanced technologies with infectious disease research that we can find solutions to some of these global public health problems.